to the podcast where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. We are back. We are back here at HR Tech, and I'm with my man here, Matt O'Connor. Matt, welcome. Thanks, Adam. Great welcome to be to, here. Welcome to the podcast. Where's home for you? Boston. Everybody. Shoes mass, I know. The whole company is a bunch of mass. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> we love the folks over at Higher Road. And, have, you had, and, have you had the beer called Massel, by the way? Is it an IPA, it's, I bet? It's, uh, it's actually a light. It's not an 8.3 IPA? It's made by the Bee Hoppy Brewery. You yeah. probably heard that, yeah. Have you had that, Ben? It's called no. Massel, yeah. Massel Lager. I'm going to check with my Boston mm-hmm. friends. Well, Matt, welcome to the show. You're the CRO over at Higher Road. And for anybody out there, what is a job? You've had multiple CRO roles. You're a Panda Logic beforehand. What is the role entail? Yeah. What are your responsibilities? Yeah, look, CRO roles vary everywhere, right? Sometimes it's the CSO, sometimes it's a CRO, sometimes it's head of go-to-market, head of growth. It just varies a little bit everywhere. But I'm really head of go-to-market and head of sales, head of, head of revenue. I work closely with marketing, obviously our existing clients, new prospects to drive the growth of the company and set the course from a go-to-market perspective and partner with our CEO and the executive team and doing that. Heavy is a crown, right? Because at the end of the day, it's revenue. Yep. Right? And you're a sales organization, you're selling a product. How do you walk the floor of this convention hall and look at the other products? What lens do you have on that may be different than somebody who works in marketing? Yeah, that's great. Marketing's uh, not a great example. Maybe someone who works in product. That's not a good example either. It's all tied <laughs> together. Yeah. Look, when I walk the floor, I my main goal is to look at the ecosystem we're selling in. Who are all the players? and all of the different hubs and spokes. You have it right here, right? You've got payroll, onboarding, HRAS, training, performance, Mm. surveys, ATS. These are all the different systems that we integrate with on our product. So I'm looking at that lens. What are they doing for analytics? What's their motion? What's their partnership plan? How are these guys selling to the market? What's their value prop? And how do we either compete or collaborate? Do you ever do you ever go up to these booths and maybe they don't recognize you? Don't they're not looking at you? Turn your badge inside out all the time. Asking for yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been in HR tech for twenty years or so, so it's it's not that easy to do that. But yeah, and I'm and usually up front. Hey, listen, we're growing the category together. Tell me right. what you guys are doing differently than what we do. There's a I'm a big believer in collab over compete. Yes, there's competition. Yes, you're going after a lot of the same customers, yeah. and it comes down to differentiation. So when you and the team go to market, what is your core differentiator? Let me take a step back. <clears throat> What's your philosophy on sales approach? Yeah. Let's lead into that. First, it's all about the needs of the customer, right? So the, the number one thing is get to know the client more than they know themselves. Understand their business problems. What are they solving for? What are they interested in? How are they imp- interested in impacting their business? My, my early background was actuarial and underwriting, okay? mm. where you're taught to basically break down a company to the intimate details, right. right? Everything about that company. So you can't start trying to propose a solution or fix a problem if you don't know. So you can't just show up and throw up and do the product pitch and so forth. So discovery is essential, right? And there's all different sales methodologies. Right. I've implemented every single one at different tried places. Yeah, I've tried them all. In HR tech, it's usually a combination of several of them, right? Usually a combination of little challenger, little solution selling. It's all bespoke. Absolutely. Everyone's different. Absolutely. But let's talk about, for folks out there, the build versus buy dilemma when you come into an organization. Yep. Let's break that down. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of options. What's your time? Right. How quickly do you need the insights? Right. So if you're buying a people analytics product, how burning is your problem? Can you wait? Do you have a BI tool? Is your data clean? Do you have resources? Do you have investment? Do you have buy-in from people? But really, what's the speed to value that you need to solve that problem? And look, most people are doing a little bit of a combination of both. They're buying a, a tool like, like a People Insight tool, and then they're potentially augmenting it. How hard is it to talk someone out of a sale? Like you don't need this. Talk them out of a sale? You don't need that. You have it already on board. You have these tools in an organization. Maybe you're just missing this little piece or this little piece there, but they want everything because they don't know they already have it. Yeah, all of these tools have an analytics layer for the most part, mm-hmm. but what they don't do is work with each other. So there's no overarching analytics tool talking to each other. Look, if somebody is, we want a customer that's going to be a happy client, 
and they're going to stay with us for a long time. So we don't want a quick hit where they're gone. So I believe in being transparent with them. And if you can't solve their problem, be honest with them. What's your hot take when, when, when customers ask you out there, what AI tools do you have? How are you using AI? Like, is it a buzzword or how are you selling in the right products and explaining it the right way? When clients are asking us Correct. about AI tools? AI tools within your platform. Yeah, look, they're trying to use AI to glean insights that are more accurate, potentially faster, doing it effortless, where AI can actually add value to it, maybe reduce the amount of time it might take them to analyze things and analyze data, give them true predictions on what's either gonna happen or what is happening. It's pretty straightforward, but it's not taking the people out of the loop. That's an interesting one, and I was leading into more the downside AI, and we talked no. a lot about how AI is it's not gonna take the job, it's people that know how to use it. But where are you seeing maybe unnecessary use of it or maybe too early and they, they hear a mandate from their CEO to the, to the head of people, we need to use a, more AI in our people analytics to inform, we well, may not need that. Yeah, plus every, every product has some base layer AI MLM's doing for something, 50s, yeah. right? Yeah, come on, it's been like that. <clears throat> Even if it was just machine learning or logic, it's now called AI, right? So some nice, <laughs> shiny, all encompassing wrapper. Yeah, but customers see through it. They know whether it's real or whether it's fluff, mm -hmm. or whether it's smoke and mirrors. We try to you know, really focus on the steak, not the sizzle. And what's, what am I getting? What is AI doing for me? Mm -hmm. What is it bringing to my business? What is it helping me solve? What is it doing that I can't do without extra resources, extra people, and so forth? What's your biggest <clears throat> challenge in that sales process, going against competitors? Where do you see the challenge as a product in an organization? Yeah, look, we are, you were at one of our branding events last night, right? We're trying to get our name out. Sorry. Yeah. No, I think that's a fact. Yeah, we, people don't know. They either have heard of Higher Road, but they don't know what we do. They don't know what products we have. They don't know what we solve for. Or in some cases, they might think we're an end-to-end -end recruiting solution. They're not aware of our people inside product. I think you got to double down on the case studies. You had Shane Noah on before. Yep. No, wait, sorry. Taking that, I'm glad we recorded it yesterday. Yeah. It's the ability to take that content and <clears throat> put it into your sales and marketing yeah. outreach, right? When you think about the funnel, that's going to change it to the sales funnel. Getting that attention and attraction on top of funnel by utilizing content and thought leadership, but thought leadership specific to use cases within your product. And I think that is something companies need to do more of. Absolutely. And embrace content. Yeah. So I really hope that I think yesterday's event, not just chain talking, but even giving out the koozies, yeah. people are going to look at that. And even if one person like, who the F is this higher road? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, like, oh, hey, it's, pre it's pretty interesting what they're doing over there. I want to switch gears. And, and you've been in a leadership role for a number of years. Yeah. Salespeople are a different breed. <laughs> yep. And obviously there's overlap. And I would tend to think you have a no assholes policy also yeah, there. Absolutely. But how do you get to evaluating that policy? How, what's your interview process? What are some of those? Yeah. Those, those questions that you ask when you're hiring. Yeah, let me start with the, the last question I ask, which in every interview, it's an essential question. So I always ask the candidate, okay, I'm introducing you tomorrow to your team or to the company. I want you to give me the introduction that's going to tell them about you, tell them what kind of person you are, and give them confidence that we hired you, whether it's a leadership role or a rep role. Give me your intro right now on the spot. And people bomb that. And some of the intros are so awful. You're like, really? That's it? That's, that's, you? that's what you want to tell me that's about you? you? That's who I'm hiring? No. Nope. Uh -huh. Some crush it and give you this great introduction. Monologue. That is authentic. Yeah. It's truthful. And it's impactful. So people, everybody says to me when I ask them that question, I've never been asked that before. That's great. Give me your intro. Come Let's on. give a shout out. What's the best one you've heard recently? Which employee? Wow. Look, I mean, we just hired a couple of new salespeople. Let's shower them with some kudos. Yeah. Chelsea Burke. She gives a great one. She, <clears throat> she is uh, so passionate about selling, about solving client problems. And she's just so truthful in terms of what she's looking for in a company, a culture, a boss, and so forth. 
The podcast would like to thank Higher Road for supporting this series of episodes recorded live at HR Tech in Las Vegas this September. Higher Road is a leading global provider of HR software driven by People Insight, our best in class people analytics solution. People Insight by Higher Road delivers implementation in under one week. It's a suite of intuitive dashboard visualizations to make sense of your disparate HR data and a team of analysts to support you every step of the way. They provide a transparent, cost-effective approach to meet companies where they are at in their people and data journey. And for more info, please visit higherroad.com forward slash pause, P-O-Z. Thanks. And, and when you're hiring sales folks, there's obviously different levels of where they come in in a sales role with an organization, but how important is the, the product knowledge and how do you onboard them the right way yeah. with the product and category? Do they have to come from the HR tech world? No, they don't have to. So we just hired a couple of new You don't want to untrain. Reps. Sometimes it's harder to untrain somebody, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So Break bad un- habits. Untraining is harder than training. Of course Absolutely. it is, yes. Talk so, to my wife. She's been untraining me for 17 years. I'm <laughs> almost just, there. You are, yeah. It can take me another 17 years. I'm, I feel the same way. <laughs> we just hired two new ones, and one was from the space, but on the recruiting side, not analytics. Mm-hmm. And the other one was from more the retention side, from the care industry. And look, they, in the first few weeks, they dove into the product. We, we did some practice pitches, practice demos. We spent several sessions together. Yeah, doing some role playing. And, and, we, and it's the safe zone. I said, hey, you guys are learning. So this is the safe zone. I don't, you don't care if you bomb the first mm-hmm. one. This is about practice. Nobody's judging you here. Dive into the product and they're looking at videos, attending webinars, doing a bunch, sitting in on sales calls, listening. Actually, they're sitting in on some meetings this week with us, partner meetings. And they also bring a fresh perspective. Their ears into the ground. They're coming in from a different angle. I want to go back to something I want to talk about a little bit earlier. Yeah. Big problem in companies right now is retention, attrition. From a sales lens, how are companies best using the tools to reduce attrition and increase retention? Yeah. I think it starts with drilling down to where are the retention issues, right? So... <clears throat> some of our companies just okay, everybody has a turnover rate. Mm. Every company has some turnover rate. But every company is not looking at turnover by department. They're not looking at turnover by region. They're not looking at turnover by manager, right? And they're not drilling down into turnover by tenure. Is it, they're not looking about, uh, am I keeping women in the workforce? Am I, mm. you know, is there turnover in certain yeah, yeah, diverse candidate pools that, that we have? They're using our insights to really drill down deeper into the turnover issues. And was it a hiring issue? Is it a culture problem? Mm. Is it a manager problem? Because, hey, let's be honest. People don't, Self-awareness. Leave, people don't leave companies more so in jobs as they leave their managers. Let's most, be really it's, honest it's mo- Most of the time, it's your direct contact every day who you don't get along with, dislike, don't see eye to eye, not a good manager, not enabling you, not empowering you, not giving you the tools that you need to, not giving you the tools that you need to succeed. And one more thing. On please, that. Yeah, please. I mean, look, I, one, of, one of the things I'm most proud of in a leadership role for, for 20 or so years is my retention rates have always been extremely high because I believe in treating people fairly, being transparent and truthful. And even, I, I tell them, ask me any question and you will get a true answer. You won't get fluff. You will, I, I won't lie to you. I won't spin you. And I, I don't forget where I came from. I used to be in their shoes. So I try to That's treat important. people fairly. And even sometimes when it's results or you're holding people to quota, sometimes they might think you're not being as fair as you are, but, but you are. I've had great retention rates. And typically when I've left a place, it's a, you people leave in droves, unfortunately. Well, how, how do you balance that in a sales role where rubber hits the road? Maybe someone's not a great performer, but they're adding so much other value in the organization, specifically in the sales role. How do you balance that as a decision maker, people leader? Yeah, I, I always look at the why, right? So I believe when companies hire people, they interview them, they, they, the, the resume, mm-hmm. check references, five to 10 people are interviewing. They have a track record. There's a reason they were hired. So why aren't they being successful? It's Is it an enablement, right? The, the most important thing in a sales organization, right, is... You need a good product, right? But you you need talent, you need market opportunity, and then you need enablement. If you have those two and you don't have enablement, even your really good sellers aren't gonna be successful. So why are they failing? And help remove the roadblocks. If you do all that and teach them how to fish and give them feedback and then they still fail, it's on them. 
But if you're not if you're not enabling them, it's on you. It's on the company. It's on you as a leader. I got to say, I really do love this conversation because I don't think I've had a really good talk like this with a sales focused people leader in a while. And I really appreciate your approach and your honesty. And I think you see the results, success of higher growth the team. When I was chatting with John Wright before, I, I'm starting to, and, and knowing Kristen and meeting someone, and I'm not just saying this because you guys are our partner and sponsor, yeah. but, but I'm seeing from an outside perspective that I'm a in the trenches recruiter who sees beyond the blinders, who sees in the organization. And I'm seeing what John is building here with culture of the right people yeah. who everyone's got this vibe of good hearted and doing things the right way. Listen, at the end of the day, we're not, oh, we're just know, getting started. We're, we're just not getting started. Things. Sorry. So what are you most excited for with this company and product? Yeah, we have an incredible people insight product. Our promise product itself, our promise is up and running in five days. That's not fluff. That's not a marketing. I've already seen it demonstrated time and time mm -hmm. again, right? We actually, when we have your data, we deliver your product in five days. It's a testament that's, to the team and the product. Of. And then we have the support. It does everything it says and more. Speed to value. What keeps me up at night though is that there's anybody, Adam, anybody in the market. This, you, you're a sports fan? Yeah. Right, old Michael Jordan shirt from Nike. Somewhere someone's practicing and when you meet them in head-to-head -head competition, they'll beat you. Yeah. What keeps me up at night is anybody in the space considering a people analytics solution and doesn't know who we are. That is what keeps me up. We need to be top of mind when people are thinking about solving their people analytics problem. Hopefully this conversation, all that conversations we're having on the podcast with Hire, we're going to spread the word out there and get the word out about the team, the product. It's incredible, folks. You have had a track record of success, named one of TA Tech's most influential thought leaders of 2023, which it's nice. Right, it helps, but it helps them in a way, if you think about it, not just you, but the company, that they could shine a light on the organization that you're working on. Everyone kind of defines success a little bit differently and it's part personal, part professional, but Matt O'Connor, how do you define success? Personally and professionally? Please. Yeah. First of all, never compromise who you are. I don't believe in getting ahead and stepping over people to do it. I believe in, and I, that's cost me in my career. I have intentionally not done that and missed out on things. So success for me is never forget where you came from, focus on delivering values, mm -hmm. building true relationships, treating people the right way, and working hard. And when you work hard and you're focused and you do all the right things, business falls where it is. What was it? Thomas Jefferson said, hey, you, the harder you work, the more luck you have. So you, you keep doing that. You do it with ethically, with morals a good moral compass, and you build a personal brand and a reputation that people want to follow. Personal brand is your reputation. And what I always say is reputation is what people say behind your back. Absolutely. What you say about you. And this has been a good one. This has been a good one. I want to thank you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with my audience. Where can folks find you? Where can they connect? Where can they learn more? Yeah, they can go to highroad.com. They can connect with me <laughs> on LinkedIn. Or they can text me anytime. I've got an open door policy to text me. All these sales guys are like, yeah, take my number. Get no, it, get but it. look, I, and I don't, it's funny, I'm in the revenue role, but I don't consider myself, I don't like the stereotype that comes with selling. I don't like that used car salesman. I'm a recruiter. I get the same shit, man. Life insurance, right? sales. All I, I don't, recruiters I don't want suck, that stereotype all salespeople, all lawyers. Yeah, I'm a problem solver. Favorite aside, take Tom Brady out of the equation, favorite Boston athlete of all time. Larry Any Bird, sport? not even a question. Would you agree with that, Ben? Larry Bird, like no athleticism. Not Bobby Orr? No, love Bobby Orr, but not a huge hockey fan, but Larry Bird, no athleticism. Couldn't jump over a phone book and one of the greatest of all time. Come on, yeah. And I've got multiple Bird memorabilia signed things. What's, you your, favorite, what's your favorite piece of memorabilia? Uh, not just Larry Bird. Honestly, it's... I've got, I have a Brady signed, I have a ticket stub of every Super Bowl that he won with his picture in a frame well, that's that, cool. he's, that he signed. I don't have the Tampa Bay one though, <laughs> just the Patriots ones. But look, one of the, the artists that, that does all the paintings for the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame for every inductee, he did a piece on Bird and he only did 33. That was his number. He yeah. only did 33 of them. And I have one of those. That's, it's it's my yeah. It's in my basement. It's a, it's a special right, piece. That, those are important. And and I have my my Shea Stadium seats. I'm a diehard. And and my wow. my, my first my in first, your house. Yeah. In my office. In your office. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and and I think about that '86 World Series. Oh yeah. And uh, people don't know about like Bill Buckner. That again, it goes back to recognition. Hall of Fame baseball player. 
Yeah. And don't forget one moment there. Matt, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, this has been great. a good chat. It was great. Thank it, was you really, for joining us. it was really great joining and I uh, hope to do it again. Awesome. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com. <laughs>